bring in the, young, the youngest person ever elected to Congress, Republican Madison Cawthorn of North Carolina. Uh, first of all, congratulations, uh, an amazing victory for you. Uh, and before we talk about that, though, I want to go back to this weekend yesterday. What do you make of some of those very disturbing scenes we saw? The scenes were disgusting. Uh, so I'll tell you, I'm up here in Washington, D.C. right now for new member orientation, which is basically congressman school. And so I was about 60 feet below the Supreme Court, uh, just in a, a congressional auditorium listening to a lecture. And I looked onto my, my social media and I saw that there's a million people above, right above my head. And so I got an elevator and I went up to and greet the MAGA supporters. I actually got to speak in front of the Supreme Court. Uh, there, was, there was nothing but American flags, people saying, God bless America, people saying the national anthem. It was a very cheery, very peaceful, very easygoing crowd. Uh, but that all changed as soon as the counter-protesters came out, these people who were out to pick a fight. And that's exactly what they got. You saw that when the Trump supporters weren't engaging as they wanted to, uh, that these Antifa members, these Black Lives Matter members, decided to just start attacking Republican people, these, uh, these MAGA supporters that were out for the march. And it's right. disgusting. That shouldn't right. happen in our country. It shouldn't, but why do you think it keeps happening? I mean, do you, what role... Does each, uh, you know, each entity out there, that, whether it's the political parties, the media, what's going on that, that is not being addressed? Because I saw a guy get cold cocked from behind and then his phone was taken and everyone around it either filmed it or laughed at him. No, I'll tell you the exact reason why it's going on, and it has to do with the two national parties. Our two-party system has failed us, and it has pushed our country so far apart, and national leaders on both sides of the aisle are fueling their, their political campaigns off of this divide. Uh, but I think I represent a new age of politics where we're here to say, let's stop the divisiveness, and let's all come together as Americans. Right. Well, of course, you yourself are targeted now. We've got to point out, you gave a speech at the Republican uh, National Convention, the type of speech that elevates candidates, you know, just the kind, type of speech that elevated a, a local, you know, uh, elected official in, in Illinois to president, you know, those kind of things. It was that kind of speech. But immediately thereafter, the media came after you and labeled you a racist and a sexist. And those things are going to continue to come at you as your stature grows. What do you say in, to, to folks who are making those accusations? Well, the one thing I say to those is cancel culture is toxic, and it, try, it keeps good people out of politics. But I'm not going to back down to the mob. Uh, it's almost a joke here in Washington, D.C. with all the Republican members, because this is the most diverse field of Republican freshmen we've ever had. And, you know, we'll, we'll all start sit there and we realize that the Democrats use the exact same playbook of attacks right. against every single one of us. Uh, but I'll tell you. Us having the most diverse field of Republican candidates up here in Washington now as Congressman elects, uh, that has nothing to do with tokenism. That has nothing to do with us trying to have affirmative action within our ranks. That is because we are the big tent party. It's just an example of what our ranks of Republicans look like. It, it transcends all Madison, races and all religions. Ma Madison, let me just squeeze one more in with you, please. Gen Z Republicans, how do they differ from the grand old party? Because you kind of blame both parties, which I thought was was an interesting take. I've got less than a minute, but if you can tell me the distinction between what your generation is bringing to D.C., particularly on the Republican side. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, the number one thing is, one, we have backbones of steel. Per personally, mine's made out of titanium, but we don't back down to a mob. But secondly, uh, Gen Z Republicans don't really care about social issues. We, we don't care about what happens in your personal life. So long as it doesn't hurt somebody else, we think that that's okay right. for you to do. Uh, but we personally, most of us pertain to conservative values, uh, but we don't want to force that on anybody you. else. What we care about is freedom and a, and a limited government. Congressman-elect, congratulations. You've made history, and I'm sure that won't be the first time. Thank you very much.